What's up everyone, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today we're gonna be checking out the GWIC Cloud 50 Watt CO2 Laser Engraver. If you've been following my channel for a while, you've probably noticed that I've reviewed quite a few diode lasers. This is my first CO2 laser, so my expectations are pretty high. If you aren't familiar with GWIC, that's probably because most of their machines are geared towards industrial use. The machine I'm testing today is the Pro 2 model. They actually sent me an original Pro to test, but it had so many problems that I ended up sending it back to them. They assured me that these problems that I had been having have been addressed on this new model. The first thing you'll notice is just how heavy duty this machine is. This is an obvious carryover from their industrial machines. The body is steel and the top is glass. Make sure you have someone to help you get it out of the box because this thing weighs a ton. The packaging it was shipped in was also very good. They strapped it to a pallet and have a shock sensor on the box to indicate if it has been dropped in shipping. While most diode lasers are roughly 400 by 400 millimeters or 16 by 16 inches, this one is 510 by 300 millimeters or about 20 by 12 inches. As you can see, I'm using Lightburn, and this is for a couple reasons. For one, it's a program that I'm already familiar with. I use it with all of my other laser engravers. The other is because I couldn't get their software to work. I had problems connecting wirelessly, and when I was able to connect, the software just seemed clunky. While this is an issue because they sell you the machine with the idea that you can use their software, I'd likely be using Lightburn anyways. Basically, just plan on buying Lightburn if you buy one of these machines. Now let's talk about some of the positive things I experienced with this machine. It's a 50 watt CO2 laser, which means it can run a lot faster than the diodes that I've been using. It's so much faster that it uses millimeters per second instead of millimeters per inch. This took a little bit of getting used to. While 400 millimeters per minute might be good for an engraving speed on one of my diode lasers, I was able to run the Gwike at 600 millimeters per second. That would be 36,000 millimeters per minute, if I'm not mistaken. I think you just multiply by 60. Uh, anyways, I usually kept my diodes at 100% power, but with this, I was able to drop it with 40% and still get a nice clean engraving. I did try going over 600 millimeters per second. You notice on this first big test piece that it has some shifting in various parts of the design. I slowed it down to the recommended speed of 600 millimeters per second for this next big test and didn't have any issues with that. So definitely make sure you're staying at 600 or less millimeters per second. Of course, you'll be able to cut a variety of materials, and I've mostly been cutting plywood. One major advantage over a diode laser is that you'll be able to cut clear acrylic. The Pro comes with a couple different size rotary attachments, and it's just two different sizes based on the diameter of what you're going to be engraving. I really liked how easy they are to set up. So with the machine off, you just remove the tray and the laser grid. Then you drop your rotary into this lower left corner. Make sure you flip this switch to change to your rotary attachment. Then slide the gantry forward, connect this plug, and move your gantry until it lines up with one of these marks. There's two positions based on the size of the rotary you're using. There's nothing that needs to be changed in the software itself, and I really like that. Uh, just make sure that you rotate your design to match whatever your tumbler is facing.
A major improvement that I noticed between the original Pro and the Pro 2 is the fume extraction. The original model was horrible. The whole machine would fill up with smoke and it would leak out of all the openings. It works much better on this new model. They moved the laser tube to the gantry itself, which I think allows a lot better airflow to the fan. Obviously, you shouldn't bypass any of the safety features and run it with the door open, but I needed to get a good shot for the video. Even with the door open, it still sucked all the smoke out. As you can see, I'm using one of their add-on fans and an extra long hose to get it to run out my shop door. Overall, my experience with this laser was okay. A couple things that bothered me were things like the hinge that's used on the lid, I would have expected a couple of hydraulic lifts, uh, but these are just some sort of friction hinge. It also annoyed me how much the tray gets marked up when uh, I'm cutting through material. Uh, I understand that it's a catch tray, but a simple piece of stainless or something would have solved this. This might just be me nitpicking a little. Uh, my number one complaint is that the machine homes out on every cut. Uh, even if you stop a job, it will home out. So this isn't a big deal for the X and Y, but it means that you're going to have to reset your Z offset every time you run a program. And I can't explain how frustrating it is to ruin a project because you forgot to reset your Z height uh, after just stopping it to make like a quick adjustment or something. Uh, it seems like this should be able to be fixed with a firmware update and hopefully GWIC will address this issue. Oh, and I almost forgot the camera. This is another feature that just doesn't work. Uh, it worked when I first got the machine going, but after a few uses, it just stopped connecting properly. Uh, I tried a number of things to troubleshoot it and couldn't get it to work. I've noticed that a bunch of other people have been complaining about this issue too. I tried calibrating it and could never get the calibration to work. So I don't know, I guess I probably would just assume that you don't have a camera on this machine and run it like that, which is pretty much how I run all my other laser engravers. So it wasn't a big bother to me, but that is a feature that you're paying for and it doesn't work. So I'm really on the fence about this machine. Uh, I'd really have a hard time recommending it to people. The one real benefit that it has is the price. At around 3,200 bucks, it costs less than half of what a Glowforge would be. Uh, it's definitely more powerful and faster than any of the diodes I've tested. I just think that they need to address some of these issues before I'd give it my recommendation. I'll still put the normal affiliate links down in the description if you do want to learn more about it though. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'd also really appreciate if you would like, share, and leave a comment below with your opinions on this machine. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see everyone over on one of these other videos.